it's really hard to miss the impact that technology is having on what we do as language educators. If you go to any conference or talk to any publishers or anyone in the field, it's all about technology. Before you get swept up in this whole technology whirlwind, uh, it's a really good idea to become informed in such a way that you can critically evaluate technology in general and then specific technologies before you choose or not choose to use them in your language classroom. And that's what this session is all about. What we're going to do is we're going to equip you with questions and also um, information about some of the issues so that it, when it comes to language teaching and technology, you can make really good, informed, and strategic decisions about whether you use or don't use a specific technology in your language classroom. We'll start the session by discussing what issues arise when we want to use technology in a language classroom. So what are the challenges that we have to think through before we just jump right in and put technology into our classrooms? Then we'll take a look at the value add of a new technology. So why should we even think about bringing technology into our classrooms? Finally, we'll walk through a critical evaluation process that you should use every single time that you are looking at a new technology to bring into your classroom. So let's get started on critically evaluating technology for language teaching purposes. The first thing to look at when it comes to language teaching and technology is to understand that there are different factors or groups of factors that influence whether a technology will be successful or not in your language classroom. And some of these factors you have control over, but some of them you actually don't have control over. So we're going to group these factors into four large groups. So we have the teacher factors, we have the student factors, we have the organizational factors, and then we have the technology factors. We're going to take a look at some of the factors within these larger categories so that you can start to understand the different influences that there are on the successful use or unsuccessful use of technology in the language classroom. Let's start by looking at some of the teacher factors that we need to consider when it comes to using technology or a technology in the language classroom. These ones are obviously the ones that you may have a little bit more control over than the other factors we'll talk about later. So the first of the teacher factors that comes that you have to keep in mind when you're looking at technology is time. It takes a lot of time to use a technology and learn a technology and then also figure out how are you going to apply that technology to your classroom and with your particular set of students. So the main teacher factor, the starting point teacher factor is time. It takes a lot of time to figure this technology out and then to learn to use it effectively. Very closely tied with this idea of time as another teacher factor is the training factor. It takes time and training to get teachers up to speed when it comes to technology. So you can't just, as a program manager, for example, you can't just throw a new technology at your teachers and say, we'll use this. What you have to do is figure out, okay, what do my teachers know? And then what do I have to train them in so that they can effectively use this technology? So teacher training is a second very important teacher factor when it comes to the use of language teaching and technology together. Another teacher factor is that each teacher is going to be very individualistic or very unique in terms of how he or she embraces or does not embrace a particular technology. So you have to be prepared um, both as a program manager and as a teacher to have some teachers embrace technology and its use and other teachers say, you know what, I'm not interested in this. So every teacher has to be approached and handled as a unique entity with his or her unique um, approach or unique feelings or unique reaction to the technology that's being introduced. Closely aligned with this is the fourth teacher factor, which is teacher expertise with technology. The reason a lot of teachers are very hesitant to use technology in their language classrooms is that they feel that their own personal expertise is actually lower than the expertise of students. And quite frankly, this is often the case because many of our teachers don't come from that technology-driven generation, whereas obviously many of our students do. 
So there's this um, perception on the part of a lot of teachers that they'll lose face in front of their students or that they're not as competent as their students when it comes to the use of technology. So this is um, both an expertise barrier and also an emotional barrier that factors in um, to teacher use of technology. So that's factor number four that goes in this teacher factor category. The next teacher factor is all about what teachers do with the technology in the classroom. So if I'm a teacher, what am I going to do with this technology? And we can kind of divide technology into two broad groups when it comes to this. And the first group of technologies or set of technologies are those that allow us to do something in the classroom that we already do. So we're going to take a process um, that we do one way, perhaps we do it manually, and now we're going to do it with a technology. So for example, a smart board would be an example of this. Um, an Excel spreadsheet for record keeping would be another example of this. Um, using Microsoft Word or any word processing software in order to create handouts would be another example of this. And on the flip side, we have technologies that allow us as teachers to do something completely new. So these are technologies that let us do something we would not actually be able to do otherwise in the classroom. And so we have to, the teacher factor here is that we have to make teachers aware that the technology is going to go into one of these two categories. Either it will help them do something they already do, or it will help them do something completely new. The sixth and final teacher factor when it comes to the use of technology is one that's related to one we've already talked about. So remember I said that each teacher is quite unique in terms of his or her approach to technology and emotional reaction to technology? Each teacher is also very unique in terms of the technologies that he or she feels are relevant. So one technology may be very, very relevant to one particular teacher, and it may leave another teacher completely cold. And there may be a different technology that really turns on this teacher, but leaves the other teacher completely cold. So different technologies kind of talk to different teachers. And this depends upon their teaching styles, the types of students they're currently teaching, their experience with technology, um, and their creativity. So you also have to be prepared both as a teacher and a program manager to have different technologies be relevant to different teachers. So that's our final teacher factor. Now let's take a look at some student factors when it comes to the use of technology in our language classrooms. And these are factors that as teachers and program managers, we actually have less control over, but we do need to be aware of them. The first factor is probably a fairly obvious one, and this is student expertise with technology in general. We're going to have a wide variety in terms of how expert our students feel when it comes to just using technology in general. We'll have some students who are very, very at home, using any technology and they're very willing to jump in and try new technologies. And we'll have at the other extreme students who are, up, who are not comfortable at all with technology and we have to kind of allow them to um, approach technology with baby steps. So student expertise with technology really adds a whole new set of variations into our language classrooms because we've got this whole range from zero level of expertise all the way up to very, uh, a very high level of expertise. So it, it adds a lot more variation into our language classrooms, which as teachers we need to be prepared to deal with. The second student factor is one that we've actually already seen as a teacher factor. And this is that student expertise with technology in general or a specific technology may exceed teacher expertise. And this creates challenging dynamics for the students as well as the teachers. So some students may enjoy the fact that, hey, I know more than the teacher. Other students may find this embarrassing or they may think the teacher loses face or they may you know, think, well, the teacher's not the teacher now because I know more than him or her. So this whole idea of student expertise exceeding teacher expertise is another student factor that comes into play with the use of technology. The final student factor we need to consider is that Students are going to see technology um, through a kind of different set of eyes than a teacher would see technology. So teachers see technology in terms of what they can do pedagogically in a classroom, be it a language classroom or a mathematics classroom or any classroom. 
Students, on the other hand, see it through a set of eyes that evaluate the technology from the perspective of how enjoyable is it, how motivating is it, um, does this make me want to learn. So we have to factor in this idea of student eyes when it comes to technology. Our students evaluate the technology quite differently than we do as teachers, and we have to balance that in when it comes to our technology choices. Now let's take a look at some of the organizational factors that come into play when we want to introduce technology into our language classrooms. The first organizational factor is one that is very similar to both the student and teacher factors, and this is the level of expertise when it comes to technology. So there are some organizations that as a whole are, tend to have a high level of expertise when it comes to technology. The staff are generally at a high level, the organization has a lot of technical support available to it, and it is just a very technically proficient organization. The second factor is very closely tied to this, and that is the level of technical expertise of the organization's management. So if the management level of an organization has a high level of technical expertise, they tend to expect or to train in a similarly high level of technical expertise into, with their staff and their teachers and so on. So closely related to the overall, overall organization's technical expertise is the technical expertise at the management level. A third organizational factor is that organization's mandate when it comes to the use of technology. Some organizations may have a very clear and very direct mandate to use technology as much as possible in the pedagogical process. Other organizations may not have this kind of mandate. And when an organization has a mandate that says, let's use technology as much as possible, obviously this is going to drive technology into the classroom much more so than an organization that does not have that mandate. So mandating the use of technology um, in the organization as a whole is a very powerful organizational factor. A final organizational factor when it comes to the use of technology in our language classrooms is the actual availability of technology. It's a very practical factor. If the organization doesn't have the technology available, it, doesn't, it obviously won't get used in the classroom. And this is a very practical one because it comes down to wonderful things like budgets. Using technology, as we know, is very expensive. A lot of the hardware that needs to be purchased and the software licenses, they are not cheap. So the availability of the technology within the organization is a very significant organizational factor. The final set of factors when it comes to the use of technology in our language classrooms is a set of factors that all have to do with technology itself. So the first of these, and, and probably the most obvious, is that technology changes really quickly. I know, I told you it was stating the obvious, but this does impact how we choose to use technology in our language classrooms or any classroom. If a technology is going to become obsolete in six months or a year, I might actually choose not to use it because if I create materials in that technology and then a year later it's obsolete, I have to put in the time again to recreate those materials. So the obsolescence or the built-in obsolescence of technology is a really, um, really big challenge for us as teachers. Technology changes so quickly that it has to be worth our while both to learn the technology and to build materials in the technology in order to actually use it. The second technology factor that comes into play is the actual purpose or way that we can use that technology as a teacher. And we can divide this into two main categories or groups. There are technologies that we can use in the classroom as teaching tools. So these are technologies that facilitate the transmission of knowledge and they facilitate students building the skills that we want them to learn. And on the other side, there are technologies that help us with the organization of our classrooms. So for example, record keeping technologies that help us keep, our, keep track of our marks and keep track of attendance and so on. So when we look at technologies, we have to figure out, okay, is this a technology that helps me teach? Or is this a technology that helps me organize my classroom and organize my records? The third technology factor is, comes down to the type of device or the type of hardware that we use the technology with. 
So when technology first started to come into the language classroom, it really came into play in our laboratories, so our computer labs or our language labs. But interestingly, what's starting to happen now is it's shifting over onto mobile devices, and it's also shifting over onto individual classroom computers that um, then allow the teacher to project things onto a screen, for example. So we have to look at how the technology is being used in terms of the hardware or the devices that it gets used on and select the technology that goes with the devices or the use um, that is permissible or practical in our classrooms. A final and quite interesting technology factor is one that comes down to the intent of the creator of the technology. And very often the purpose for which we as teachers choose to use a technology is actually not the original intent that the creator of the technology had. So for example, the creator of the technology might have wanted um, or created the technology for purpose A, but as a teacher, we're like, no, I actually don't need this technology for purpose A, but I need it for purpose B. And so this is where teacher creativity comes in. We get to look at this technology and regardless of the intent of the creator of the technology, we can say, okay, I can use it this way, I can use it this way, or I can use it this way, even if those ways are different from what the creator intended. As you can see from this brief discussion on the four categories of factors that come into play with our use of technology in the language classroom, our choices when it comes to using technology are actually pretty complex. So we have to factor in the teacher factors, the student factors, the organizational factors, and the technology factors. We have to factor all of these factors in um, in order to make our daily decisions about how we're going to use technology and what technology we're going to use. This is a pretty complex decision-making process and when you look at it, it can be pretty overwhelming. So what we're going to do from here on in is look at different ways that we can critically evaluate technology so that we can simplify the complexity of this decision making and actually make it manageable for ourselves as teachers. The first thing that we always have to do when we're looking at a new technology is determine its value add. By this I mean we have to figure out what does this technology bring to my language classroom. And in order for us to choose to use the technology, the technology has to bring something extra to the classroom. So it has to make us do something better or allow us to do something that we couldn't do before. So we have to think about different um, qualities or different adjectives that we could use in terms of the outcomes that we get when we use the technology. And this is the value add. If you look on your handout, you'll see a long list of different possible value adds for different technologies. And I'm not going to go through all of these adjectives, you can read them on your handout, but this is your first step when you're evaluating a new technology. What is the value add? Which one of these adjectives that we've given you can you check off and say, okay, yes, using this technology is a value add, and using the technology is this value add, and this value add, and this value add. So maybe students can do something faster. Uh, maybe the activity is more efficient. Maybe you as a teacher can look more professional. Um, maybe the activity becomes more motivating. Maybe the activity becomes more relevant. So these are all the value adds that we need to look at. So take a few minutes to, look, to take a look at that value add list on your handout. walk you through a critical evaluation process to use when you're evaluating a new technology for possible use in your language classroom. It's a very clear and very simple process and at the end of this process you can come to a pretty good decision or you can be confident in your decision about whether to use that technology or not and if you will use it how you're going to use it. So let's take a look at this critical evaluation process. The first three steps of this process are pretty simple. Um, the first step is you have to name or identify the new technology. The second step of the process is you have to identify the purpose of the new technology. And then the third step is you have to figure out what's the comparative old technology that has a similar purpose to that of the new technology. So those are the first three steps. 
So the next step in this process is we're going to look at both the new technology and the comparable old technology, and we'll look at the strengths and the weaknesses of each one. The next step is to take a very detailed look at what you can do with this new technology in your classroom. The first step of this, when you're looking in detail at what you can do, is to look at the four language skills and then the language systems and decide, okay, can I use this for these skills or these systems? So can you use the technology for listening, reading, writing, and speaking? Can you use it for pronunciation, vocabulary, and grammar? and discourse. So can you use it for your language skills and your language systems? Then you also want to be specific about what levels can you use this technology with. Can you only use it with beginner students or can you use it all the way up to advanced level students? So what levels can you use the technology with? Then take a look at what types of student interactions can you get with this technology. So is it a technology that can only be used individually by students, or can it be used for pair work? Can it be used for small group work? Can it be used for whole class work? Then you wanna look at what class sizes can you use this technology with. Can you only use it with private tutorials? Um, can you use it with relatively small classes? Can you use it with huge classes of 60 to 100 students? So what kinds of class sizes can this technology be used with? or even more applications that you need to look at. What types of classes can you use this technology with? So can you only use it with general English classes? Or can you use it with test preparation classes? Can you use it with business English classes? Can you use it with English for academic purposes classes? Can you use it with occupation specific classes and so on? Related to this, what ages can you use it with? Can you only use the technology with adults? Um, or is it, can it be used by children, teenagers, and so on? So what ages can you use it with? Then there's a very practical one of location. Can you use this technology in a regular classroom? Or do you have to go to, to a language lab or a computer lab? Do you need to be in a lecture hall? So where actually can you use the technology? And then finally, when it comes to application, you need to think about assessment. Can you use this technology only for teaching, or can you also use it for assessment purposes somehow? So there are a lot of different aspects to think about when it comes to application, all the way from language skills through to assessment and class sizes and student ages. So really take a detailed look at the technology to figure out how widely applicable it is. The next step in critically evaluating technology for use in your language classroom is to sit down and take some time and brainstorm actual activities that you could plan and use this technology with. So for example, think about some real reading activities that you could do, or some real vocabulary activities you could do, or some real assessments, and plan through them just to make sure that you're, you're really on track in terms of how this technology can be used at the activity level. The final step when it comes to critically evaluating the technology for use in your classroom is to make a decision. So you've done all of this critical evaluating and critical thinking, and you've got your notes all spread out in front of you, and you have to come to a decision. And there are a few different decisions that you can come to when it comes to a technology. The first decision is you can decide, I'm not using this at all, okay? The second decision is the complete opposite, you're going to completely replace all your uses of the old technology with the new technology. Your third decision is you're going to kind of sit on the fence. You're going to replace some of your use of the old technology with the new technology, but you're going to keep some of your use of the old technology as well. So it's kind of like a 50-50. The next one is that you're going to use the new technology to fill a gap. So you weren't using any technology at all, but you notice there's this gap here and I can use the new technology to fill it, so that's what I'm going to do. And then your final decision is, you know what, this technology is too complicated, I don't even understand it. So it, you just put it on the back burner and you don't go near it. So those are your different decision points when it comes to using a technology in your language classroom. I'm going to walk you through a critical evaluation process of a technology for language learning purposes so that you can see this process in action. 
So the technology that we're going to evaluate together is Microsoft Word. Okay, so that's step number one. Here's the technology. Step number two is the purpose of the technology. So Microsoft Word is a word processing software. So we use it to write and edit and format written documents. And step number three is identifying the comparable old technology. Well, that's pretty simple. The old technology, if we go way back, is pen and paper. Um, another technology this would be replacing would be the typewriter, the manual typewriter if you go way, way back, and then the electric typewriter if you don't go quite so far back. So that's the old technology that we're, we're evaluating this new technology, Microsoft Word, against. So the next step in this process is we're going to look at both the new technology and the comparable old technology, and we'll look at the strengths and the weaknesses of each one. So let's walk through that. So here are the strengths for Microsoft Word. It allows for easy editing and revisions. It has cut and paste and things like that. And this cuts down on the editing time. It allows students to make different formatting and layout choices. Students can include tables, graphs, and graphics. Students can create very professional looking documents. The program includes spell check, grammar advisor, translator, just a lot of different tools. It includes access to a thesaurus and a dictionary. At the end of the day, student work is much easier for the teacher to read. And it's also preparing students for the real life, for the real life context because an ability to use Microsoft Word is actually required in most real life contexts. Now here are the weaknesses of Microsoft as a technology. It is difficult to present students from plagiarizing from the internet, for example. Students have to learn keyboarding skills in addition to writing skills. It requires a familiarity with a computer, a mouse, and a keyboard, and so on, that some students may not have. It requires a knowledge of program features, and this takes practice and training. Unfortunately, it will differentiate students who are comfortable on a computer from those who are not, and is not, therefore, truly reflective of language ability. The writing process actually changes with writing processing software. It becomes less linear. And students may focus too much on how the document looks rather than on its content. And finally, students may rely too much on spell check and the grammar advisor, so they simply get lazy and they don't learn how to spell and they don't learn correct grammar. Now let's take a look at the strengths of the comparative old technology, which is pen and paper. Uh, one of the strengths is it's cheap, it's readily available, it's portable, it's easy to use in a variety of settings, it's more, more reliable, certainly it's not subject to technical failures. It may actually generate a more accurate reflection of the student's actual writing abilities. It's more difficult but not impossible for students to copy someone else's work. And the weaknesses of the old technology pen and paper it can be difficult for the teacher to read, and it's not reflective of, of what is happening with the writing process in the real world. Now let's take a look at the possible applications of Microsoft Word to our classes, including what language skills would, can we use it with, all the way up to assessment, class sizes and ages, and so on. So I'll walk you through this evaluation from Microsoft Word. So let's start with language skills and language systems. So the most obvious one is we're going to use Microsoft Word to teach students writing. We can also use it to, use, to teach students reading and grammar and vocabulary. Student language level. We can use it with intermediate students, high intermediate, advanced and proficiency students. We might be able to use it with low intermediate students and beginner students, but that will be a bit more challenging. Types of interactions. We can definitely do individual work with Microsoft Word, pair work and small group work. We can also do whole class where um, the teacher's putting something into the computer and then that gets, gets projected up onto a screen. And we can use it for one teacher to one student. In terms of class size, we can use Microsoft Word with all different class sizes, from the smallest up to the largest. We can also use Microsoft Word with all, all the different types of classes. So we can use it with general English, we can use it with test preparation, academic English, occupation specific English, and so on. We can interestingly use it at, in many different locations. So obviously we can use Microsoft Word in a computer lab, 
But if students have their own laptops or their own portable devices, we can use it in a regular classroom. We can use it in a library, on a field trip at the student's home and so on. So it really depends here um, in terms of what portable devices students have. We can use Microsoft with almost all ages as long as students have keyboarding skills. So kids are learning keyboarding skills as young as four and five. So we can use it um, with fairly young age groups all the way up to adults. And we can definitely use Microsoft Word for assessment. Students can create their essays or their pieces of writing in Microsoft Word and then submit them to the teacher for evaluation. And the teacher can go into the document and write comments right in the document. So it definitely has a good value as an assessment tool as well. The next step in our critical evaluation process of Microsoft Word for use in our language classrooms is brainstorming some activities that we can use Microsoft Word with. So here's a few just right off the top of my head. So we can have students write their essays or their stories or their personal responses in Microsoft Word. They then submit these to the teacher. We can have students work in pairs and jointly create a story or jointly create an essay. Here's a fun one. We can have students work at a computer, so each student has one computer, and then after five minutes, students rotate to the next computer and they take up the story of whatever's on that computer. So student A starts the story, after five minutes, students move around to the next computer, and then the student B takes up the story on that computer and so on. So it's kind of a whole class story writing activity with students circulating around the computer lab. That's kind of a fun one. Microsoft Word can also be used for any homework assignment. If you want, you can have students complete their tests in Microsoft Word so they're very easy to read. So these are just some possible um, applications or activities that you can use the technology with. And the last step in our critical evaluation of Microsoft Word as a possible technology for our language classroom is our final decision. So are we going to decide not to use it at all? Uh, have we decided it's way too complicated, so we're just putting it over here and not touching it? Have we decided to completely replace pen and paper with Microsoft Word? Um, or is there a gap that we think Microsoft Word can fill? Or are we going to do the 50-50? I put the 50-50 last because that's the decision I think we should make with Microsoft Word. So we're going to bring Microsoft Word into our classes to have students use to write essays and stories and for their homework, but we're going to keep pen and paper for some note-taking activities and also for some test-taking. So you may want to make a different decision when it comes to Microsoft Word, but this is just to illustrate the critical evaluation process. In this session, we've looked at how to critically evaluate technology for use in your language classroom. There are so many technologies out there today, and there are new technologies being added every single day. You can't use all of them in your classroom, and quite frankly, you shouldn't use all of them in your classroom. So you have to make decisions about the technologies. Are you going to use them? And if yes, how? And if, which technologies are you going to say thanks, but no thanks to? So here's what you have to think about just to recap. You have to think about, first of all, your teacher factors, your student factors, your organization factors, and your technology factors. Then you have to look at the value add of that particular technology. What does it bring to your classroom that your classroom otherwise would not have? Then put the technology through a critical evaluation process. What's the technology? What's the purpose of the technology? What's the comparable old technology? What are the strengths and weaknesses of the new technology and the old technology? What are the applications of the technology in terms of language skills, language systems, student interactions, and so on? What are some possible activities that you can use the technology with? And finally, what's your final decision about this technology? So I really recommend that you use this process and think about all of these different ideas and concepts when it comes to making technology decisions for your language classroom. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.